Happy birthday. Thank you. Brother E40. Appreciate it, We have these complimentary birthday shots. Any words you want to say? I ain't above you. I ain't above you. I ain't below you. I ain't below you. But I'm right beside you. But I'm right beside you. Cheers, player. Cheers, player, player. Got some hair on my chest. Hey, what's going on? This is E40, and this is Billboard News. More hip than a hippopotamus. Uh, get off in your head like a neurologist. Push him awake to Atlas. Got a partner by the name of Tupacalus. I don't mean no harm, it's a hood in me. Sipping on that wrist shard Hennessy. If it was lifted off the plastic, the babes would probably go spastic. My Yeti spits like elastic. The game that I give is accurate. What's going on, y'all? I'm Billboard Deputy Director of Army Hip Hop, Mr. Carl Lamar. And we are here with Brother E40. How you feeling? So, Woo! How are you feeling overall, man? I feel good, man. I really feel good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm in a happy space. Uh, God is great. This year, 50 years of hip hop, you've been celebrating a lot of wins, but I'm just curious overall, what does 50 years of hip hop mean to you? Oh, it means everything. They didn't think it'd get this far. You mm. know, now it's the number one genre of music. Hip hop, man, you see it in commercials, you see it in movies, you see it everywhere. It's all related to sports and entertainment, and it's from the uh, urban community, and look at it now, it's in became even suburban and uh, yep. <laughs> it's everywhere like air. You can't get away from it, man. 50 years. Shout out to uh, yes, Demi Cool Herc and mm -hmm. the founders of hip hop. Thank you. Absolutely. Shout out to the forefathers. 1324 Magazine Street. You said that rings a bell to you. Why? That's my upbringing. That's why I grew up at. That's why I learned all my game at. That's why I had my obstacles and hurdles that I had to jump over. Shoot, man, I mean, it means everything to me. I, it wouldn't be E40 if it wasn't 1300 Block Magazine Street. And I mean, we're also celebrating 30 years of federal. Ain't that crazy? That's a big number. That's crazy. I had an EP out in 1989 called Mr. Flamboyant before that, mm -hmm. but that was my first full-fledged album. And mm. it's a trip because that started off as an EP. Okay. And then I just was, I had so much game and gas to put out there that I just said, let me just make it into an album. So yeah, 30 years, that's crazy. Dude, Time you, be flying, man. I was gonna say, what do you remember most of a recording federal? I had a clothing store back in them days right down the street from my man Studio Tone Studio. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is um, the money that I made from my clothing store, I would go drop off um, a deposit to him. Mm -hmm. And that was pre-production back then. So that pre-production would be like four hours. And so I'd go in there, we'd make some beats and get them all together. Then I'd come back to my clothing store the next day and just start writing to it. Then I'd go drop off another deposit. And all I needed was four hours back then. And I'm just, and I'd knock out four or five songs in them four hours. Like it was already pre-written. I already had the game and gas and locked it in. I'm curious, man, when you think of federal 30 years, back then versus you have a new album coming out. Rule of thumb number one, man. How would you like describe your evolution over that 30 year period in terms of your, your writing process? <laughs> it's a trip because back th back in them days when I wrote, I would write, you know, on anything. Paper plates, like a Dixie paper plate oh, on the my. back of it. Yeah, anything. I would have my own little editing the way I did it. If I messed up on a word, I kind of like had a second page. I cut it out the word and then put that word in there. It was crazy. It's, you know, that's that yeah. genius stuff, that throw yeah. it in the head stuff, you know. And back then we was going into the vocal booth back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, punch me in, you know, if you ain't, you know, because a lot of ideas come to you right then and there. Everything ain't always written, pre pre written. Mm -hmm. um, so now I just, you know, sit in my studio, had an engineer punch me in. Like, we don't even use the, I ain't used the vocal booth in probably about five, six years. Wow. Yeah, because we do it right there in the studio now. Mm -hmm. It's headphones, microphone right there, and it's all gravity, you know? Because my room, the room treatment in my studio is nice. It's not bouncing all over the place. You know what I'm saying? The, the sound and whatnot is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'll go in there and just punch me in it, say a few words, sit down, think about it, put punch me in again, you know, like mm -hmm. that. And I feel like it's more, I'm more, I think I'm better than ever. This album gonna shock a lot of people. It's game and gas, man. It's genius, well thought out, super, super slaps, different subject matters. I don't sound like nobody in rap. I'm not trying to be like nobody in rap. I'm just being me. Mm -hmm. And I wanna satisfy my fan base. And whoever wants to join my fan base, come on in and get a dose of this game. As far as my music, it's been a drought. I grew up off of that bar. Come to the party. Yeah. And it's gonna be a nice party because you got cast like NBA Young Boy, Gucci Man, yeah. your brother too short. What I think is dope about those three I mentioned, it's kind of like three different eras. Mm-hmm. So talk about being able to have fun with that like intergenerational 
type of experience with three different eras of rap. Well, you know, let's start off with NBA Young Boy. He's a old soul. Like, he had been here before. That's a deep young man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I always liked him. And, you know, Birdman hit me one day and was like, hey, Young Boy want to um, want you on one of his songs. And um, he sent it to me. We connected. I knocked out one for his album. Came, You know, he putting out an album every two, three months. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't playing. And uh, he probably finna beat me with most albums in the game. I was just going to yeah, say that. Y'all yeah. one, two right yeah, now. Yeah, he ain't playing. Cause, you know, nowadays you can do that. And he he young and hungry. He ain't playing. And so, you know, back in our days, we used to have set up times where you got to wait, you know, eight eight, eight weeks and um, for just for the cassettes to come back in and everything. And now I can go in the studio right now, do a song or do a whole album in a week and have that thing out the next week, you know, mm. real quick, the next day, the next 24 hours, 48 hours. But, you know, young boy, um, it was it was great having him on there. I got him on a, a song that people probably wouldn't even know he would get on. It's, it's positive, mm -hmm. but it's just the struggle. It's mm -hmm. like, it's really, it's a good one. It's called trying to get my life right. Mm -hmm. Then you got Gucci Man. I've been, I mean, Gucci Man got so many damn songs together. <laughs> yeah. From <laughs> my albums to his albums, mm -hmm. gold, platinum, all that. So that's my guy, man. I met Gucci Man like in 2001. Him and Jeezy at the same time, I met both of them on Big Meech Bus. Wow. Yeah, we was all we did a video. I did a song called Still Here with uh, Blue Da Vinci back in them days. We was all together, and ever since then, I've been cool with Jeezy and Gucci and everybody. You feel me? And then uh, Two Shorts, you know, that's my brother. You oh, know, yeah, we go back to the '80s, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's a given. I love that. And yeah. you kind of just mentioned Young Boys number two when it comes with most solo albums to chart from a rap on the Billboard 200, you're number one. Yeah. What do you credit that longevity to, especially, like you said, recording and releasing albums were different back then versus today? Just really having a passion for rapping. Mm. Like, I really love rapping, and it ain't no sense of me going in the studio for eight hours and not knocking out two, three songs at least, a verse of each song, and then go back and add another verse to it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just feel like my music need to be heard. I took a break, like, for about two, three years. You know, I'm, I done got so busy into my diversity, you know, having different side hustles and stuff like, you know, selling the dope beverages and food and stuff like that. But now, you know, I've always rapped, but I got hundreds of songs, like, I'm, what, I'm, what my plan is to do, I plan on doing four albums within the next eight months. You know, RIP to my brother, Nipsey Hussle. I heard you and Nip was supposed to get in the studio on Victory Lap. Yeah, so he, he sent me, um, been grinding on my life. Grinding on my life, sacrifice. And I didn't know, he, he didn't tell me when he needed it back. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm like, oh, damn, he, this one of them ones, yeah. too. He, he didn't say, like, because sometimes we'll say, I, say, I say, when you need it back. And he, oh, man, give me a couple. You know, we didn't even discuss it. He just sent it. Next thing you know, he just he, he put took it to the face. I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. But I miss Nipsey. He was really a good dude. He always showed me respect. He patterned his hustle after mine. You know what I'm saying? I really miss him. And I think he would really make a big impact in rap right now. If he was still living. His music was great and uh, he was an overall great person. Of course, R.I.P. R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. Hussle. Also, R.I.P. Mr. Tupac Shakur. You were there when they made Tupac Shakur away. Man, what's your fondest memory of, of Pac? <laughs> My mom was getting the house, um, um, getting her house ready. She had just bought a house in Hayward. Mm -hmm. And so she was staying uh, in Emeryville for a minute in some apartments were, um, up the stairs from my sister Sugar T, right? Mm -hmm. Tupac came out and we shot this video called Practice Looking Hard. Whatever happened to the days of Little League? Pop Warner and Boy Scouts, the Omega's Boys Club. Mm. This is in 1993. And he really came out there, him, man, man, all his crew. We had the whole Bay Area. Everybody that was somebody, they all came out and we did, it. We, we just had a ball. I mean, he taking pictures with the kids, he all in the video. You can find me, him, Boots from the Cool through the video, through the whole thing. And then we had all the other rappers from the Loonies to Drew Down to Spice One, to everybody that was somebody in that video. Yeah. I hadn't even had a, a, a distribution deal at that time. I was still, you know, with City Hall Records, that was my main distribution hub, a small, um, one stop slash distributor, you know what I'm saying, in the Bay. And um, it was just great to uh, just have him sit there and show people how to, <laughs> he showed people how to roll a blunt. <laughs> you know, way back then, he's like, this is how 
you roll a blunt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just being a genuine person and showing love to the older people that was there because the whole apartment complex was just full of everybody, from kids to older people, everything, and just took pictures with them and all that. So just that's just one of many. You know, I just like genuine people. That's, yeah. that's how I am. I love that. So keeping it West Coast, you teamed up with your brother Snoop for this new cookbook, Goon with the Spoon. Absolutely. Talk about that experience and how it's different, you guys teaming up in the booth versus making this cookbook together. Me and Snoop, we both enjoy cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, he got his recipes how he get out, I got my recipes how I get out. Okay. Based on our upbringing and our surroundings. Okay. I started off cooking on IG by 2014. Mm. I was, my, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law bought me a power pressure cooker and I started using that thing. So I was putting oxtails in that thing. I was putting some other chicken. Oh, you're um, doing real cooking. Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, um, lasagna. You could do a lot of that stuff with the, you know what I'm saying? I was okay. making um, uh, short ribs, uh, gumbo. So I started hashtagging Goon With The Spoon and the Goon With The Spoon comes from a song that my cousin B Legit and I both did. B was like the first one screaming Goon With The Spoon. Mm. And I was like, ugh, that's so hard. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I hashtag going with Spoon, so I had my boy cousin Feek. I say, Feek, uh, has somebody going to design a logo? So mm -hmm. he had one of his boys design a logo. So I put the vector of the logo into all my segments of my cooking on IG. People just start chiming in, oh, man, that look good. And it got verified. And so he he was like, Earl, cousin Earl, you need to let me cook you, put your book out, man. I had a best, mine is a bestseller. Mm. Cause he got his book look just similar to that, but it's different color and different schemes. And mine look more ghetto elegant. <laughs> <laughs> he told that. me that. I'm wondering because it, it, you have this chef mentality. Are you critical when you try other people's food? Very critical. Mm. You know, I take pride into cooking, and I and I try to treat everybody like I want to be treated overall. And I like food to, according to how I like it. Like I like mayonnaise, right? So if I'm making a, um, a turkey melt, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I definitely got to spread the mayonnaise on all parts of the bread. Mm. You can't just put a little woo -woo on there. I make, I make it according to how I like it. If I like okay. it, you should love it. Yeah. Hey. Because I feel like God bless me with great taste buds. The, the alcohol to the ice cream to obviously now the cookbook. Talk about your venture into being an entrepreneur and how that has been able to add extra longevity to your brand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's always good to have uh, additional revenue streams. Mm -hmm. You know, you want you want checks to come from here, there. You want your wire deposits here. You you want it there. You know, you want to get money from all all over the place. You know, so you gotta have octopus arms in this game. And uh, that's one thing about me. I've always been that type of. I've always been into that mode. You know, from selling tapes out the trunk of the car. I've been an entrepreneur. I call it entrepreneur. Which is an entrepreneur and a millionaire all put in one. You know, bar. Yeah, I'm throwing like a frisbee. Ooh, I say all kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? I mean, listen, I feel like you've had a fruitful year in 2023. You got your doctorate from Grambling, honorary doctorate. You got to kick it with Miss Kamala Harris. Yeah, definitely. Did. What's been your proudest moment and achievement of this year? <sighs> you want me to tell you for real? I'm being real. I'm keeping one thou wow, mm. man. Um, damn, it's kind of like a tie. It's my doctorate degree, and then also the Magazine Street sign. Getting my street named after me and getting the key to the city. Yeah. Really, that's my main. That right there means so much to me because that's where it all started. If right. it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have none of nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My experiences in the trenches, everything. You know, just being seasoned, my upbringings, the way my mama raised me, you know, um, just being part of a family where. You understand me? We all work together. Do you still feel underrated in a sense, even though like shit, you're considered top 50. You know, we did our gold list, had you in the top 50. You're beloved in every city, every state, every country you go to. But in a sense, do you still feel underrated? Of course, I feel like, to be honest with you, besides Pac, I feel like I'm the dopest rapper in the world. Talk about it. Like, you know, a lot of times what people don't understand, they, they seem to, um, you know, dislike or something because they don't because it's too difficult for them but those who do understand that's open-minded that loves creativity mm -hmm. and different content and just subject matter and game and lyrics and, uh, and and slang words and all this stuff putting one I ain't rapping too fast they just be listening too slow mm. so some of these people ain't really locked in like that so that some of them ain't really from where we're from so they don't get it they just roll with whoever popular at the time then they turn two faces on them my fan base stuck with me out the gate and been with me all these years for 36 plus years you understand me doing music having music on the shelf mm. 
Amen. Thank you as always. Thank you, my God. I appreciate you, brother. Thank Thank you. you.